guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. This is officially my fourth self-tan showdown, which is kind of crazy because in each self-tan showdown, I review so many different self-tanners. I show you guys what the mousse or the mist or whatever it is that I'm reviewing looks like, how it applies. I of course show you the results on my skin, what that final color looks like, and I rate each self-tanner across a ton of different categories. I am personally super nitpicky about self-tanner. I care about everything because it's not my favorite process. I just hate applying self-tanner. I hate sitting in self-tanner. I don't like self-tans that smell really bad or feel really sticky or wet. I don't wanna have to sit in a self-tanner for eight hours to get really beautiful depth of color. I like the undertone to look really specific. I'm very picky, which is why for each of these self-tanners, I will be writing them across the following categories. Ease of application, post-application dry down, color transfer, smell of the formula, the smell while developing, how long it takes to develop, the smell after it develops, if it has that self-tan BO smell for 24 hours, the color in terms of depth, tone, and how even it is, fade and lasting time. So in today's video, which again is part four, I have seven new self tanners that I have tested out. I'm going to review them for you guys. These are all self tanners that you guys have asked me to review. So I am excited to finally deliver that review for y'all. Let's just get into this. First up is the Il Maquillage 8566 Magic Moisturizing Sun Foam. This retails for $59, but you only get four ounces of product in the bottle. So I feel like that price for the amount that you get is really steep. You do get a mitt and a brush with your purchase, but I have a mitt that I like better. I have a brush that I like better. And you don't have the option to purchase this product without the mitt and the brush, which would make it a little bit cheaper. I doubt that those two things cost that much money for them to make. So this just feels really, really pricey. The only other option they have is called the same thing, but it doesn't say face and body next to it. So I don't know if it's a different product or what that's about. That is $44 for only two ounces and comes with a brush. So my guess is that that one is just supposed to be for your face and not your body. I don't know. Expensive as heck to say the least. And then this one only comes in one shade. I would give ease of application for this self tanner a four out of five. The color guide in this is extremely light and subtle. And while that is not always an indication of what your final color is going to develop to, I found it just to be a little bit trickier to work with because it made it more difficult to see where I was laying the product down and if it was fully blended in. So it just took me a little bit more time, but other than that, it was really easy to blend in, no issues with the actual like smoothness of the product. The other thing about this that makes it a bit of a hassle for me is that I have to apply two layers of it in order to get decent color payoff. Otherwise, it's just so, so light. It's just not even worth it for me to use. And that's not a huge issue for me. I actually usually like to apply two layers of self tan. So I'll, you know, go over my entire body and then just go back over every area one more time with an additional layer. I find that that gives me really nice deep color that lasts the longest. So it's not like I don't do that with other self tanners ever. It's just that it's a little annoying that I have to do that in order to even get nice color payoff given the price. Post application dry down gets a five out of five. It wasn't sticky at all and it didn't have issues with color transfer. So I would give that a four and a half out of five. I couldn't figure out exactly what the formula itself smelled like. I personally think it smells so, so good. I tried this out for the first time last year and that's when I jotted down my original notes and I wrote, I can't pin it down, but I am obsessed in caps. They say it has a fresh, subtle scent, whatever that means. While this was developing, it didn't really smell like anything anywhere on my body except for my hands. So my hands had a little bit of that self tan smell, but otherwise it was fine. I had to wear this for at least seven hours in order to get full depth of color. So that is what I did for these before and afters. And this one did not have any smell during that 24 hour period after applying, which is always a huge plus. With the two layers of product, I do think that this looks really beautiful. It's something that I would consider to be more of a natural looking tan in terms of it just, I don't know, looking more skin-like and not so intensely self-tannery, if that makes sense. It definitely leans warm, but it's not too orange in undertone. So I would rate the color like a four and a half out of five. I do think it's super pretty. Fade gets a five out of five. It faded evenly for me, but this definitely had major color fade around day five even though the fade itself wasn't splotchy, 
I had lost a lot of color by that point. So on my skin, it doesn't last a full seven days. So I know that this is a self tanner that so many people love because of the fact that it looks more natural. And I totally understand that that final result is really beautiful. But for me, I just can't justify the price point for the amount of product that I need to use and the fact that it doesn't last as long as I would like it to. Next, we have a self tanner that went viral on TikTok about this time last year, I think. It is the Into the Limelight Sunless Tanning Mousse. This one retails for $42 and you get eight ounces of products, so much more reasonable. And it comes in shades dark and ultra dark. I would give ease of application maybe like a three and a half out of five. It's a super wet formula that doesn't dry down very quickly. So because of that, I felt like I had to go back and forth over a lot of areas to make sure that it was fully blended out and there weren't any streaky areas. But it's also the type of wet formula that really clings and sticks to a mitt. So when I would try to go back over areas to blend it out, it would end up just applying more self tan because of how much it stuck to that mitt. And then it would be this whole cycle of needing to blend again and you get it. Three and a half out of five for you. Post application dry down gets a four out of five. It dries pretty well, but it was slightly sticky and color transfer I'd give a three and a half out of five. Definitely some transfer here. I feel like the formula kind of smells a little bit like coconut. It's something that I actually did like. I don't care too, too much about how the actual formula smells, but I know that that's something that a lot of you ask about. So I want to make sure I bring it up in all of these reviews. So a little coconutty. This did start to smell while it was developing on my skin, but only at the very end during like the last one to two hours. I left this on for eight hours. At that point, it had full depth of color, but it also had full depth of stinkiness. In my notes, I wrote, yes, wowza, next to 24 hour self tan smell, meaning it smelled very intense. This develops to a nice dark self tan. If you're somebody that loves a really, really deep dark tan, this would be a brand to look into. I do think that this leans orange. It's not crazy orange, but definitely warm toned with a little bit of orange in there. One thing to note about this is for whatever reason, after only two hours, my hands were bright orange. And I did the whole thing where you apply the lotion as a barrier cream underneath. I fully washed my hands after two hours. And even at that point, they were bright orange. Like what? I don't know, maybe it was a fluke. But aside from that, I would say I would give the color a four out of five. No issues with fade here. I would give that a five out of five. And this one lasted a good six to seven days on me. So I would say pretty much the full length of wear. Overall, not a bad option, just not my personal favorite. Then we have one that so many of you have asked me to review. It is Filter by Molly Mae Tanning Mousse. This one retails for about 23 US dollars and comes in three different shades, which are medium, dark, and and extra dark. This was very easy to apply. I would give it a five out of five. The only thing to know is that the formula is literally green, at least on my skin, it looks green. So not the type of thing that I could be out and about in while it's developing by any means. Post application dry down is about a three and a half out of five here. It was definitely sticky and color transfer is a three and a half out of five as well. This one also kind of smelled like coconut to me. I thought that it smelled really good and it didn't really have a smell while developing too bad, but similar to Into the Limelight, towards the end of wearing that on my skin, it started to have that smell. I left it on for eight hours and it did have that 24 hour self tan stink on me. The color is very deep, so I like that about it, but the undertone of this self tan just doesn't look right on my skin. It definitely has an olive undertone, which makes sense because the formula was so, so green. So if you are somebody that does have an olive undertone, I think that you would love this because there are so many self tanners that do lean warm and orange. So if those look off, on you, this is something I would check out for sure. It just doesn't look quite right on my skin. I feel like it makes me look a little bit sick or something, like something's not right. So on me, I would give it like a three and a half out of five, but if you had all of undertones, obviously that rating is going to be a lot higher for you. Fade is a five out of five even no issues and it lasted about six to seven days. So definitely not one that I plan to use again, but again, depending on your undertone, I am sure there will be some of you that really love this. Next up, we have the Tanceuticals Self Tanning Body Mousse. I saw so many requests for this and I never knew what it was. I was always confused by the name. I was like, are they like trying to be a medical grade self tan company? No, that's, they're just called Tanceuticals. This retails for $31.95 and only comes in one shade. I rate 
rated ease of application a three and a half out of five. It's a very wet foam that has nice glide initially, but it's just not the most seamless to blend. Like once you start getting going with the blend, that's where I started to have issues. Also, this one has a very strange color as well because it's pink. Post application dry down for this one is really low. I rated it a two and a half to three out of five. It is just very, very sticky for a while. It does eventually mostly dry down, but it took a long time for me. The smell of the formula itself is not super apparent. I also thought that this one smelled a little bit coconutty. I get why self-tan brands do that because it's like a tropical type smell. This one had a subtle smell around the seven to eight hour mark, but it wasn't bad at all. And after leaving this on for a full eight hours and showering, I felt like this just barely had a smell. I didn't use a scented lotion on top of it, so that is why I could kind of smell it a little bit, but I could tell it was subtle enough to where it could be easily covered by a scented lotion. The color is good in terms of depth, but it is very pink and red in undertone. I feel like this kind of looks like a sunburn when I compare it to the rest of the self tanners, but by itself, I feel like I didn't notice that as much. Like when I was just standing looking at me in the mirror with no other self tan results next to me, I was like, oh, it's a nice, you know, dark self tan. But looking at this after, I'm like, oh, wow, yeah. However, again, for those of you that have cool pink undertones, this could be something that works great for you and doesn't pull nearly as orange. So on me, again, I would give it like a three and a half out of five, but if you got pink undertones, the score is gonna be higher. This one started to fade pretty splotchy on me by day four. I felt like in my arm creases and just kind of some of those key areas that tend to fade first, I noticed splotchiness. So I would give fade a three and a half out of five, even though aside from those splotchy areas, like the arm creases, my stomach, around my neck, Otherwise, it lasted about six to seven days. So this one uh, honestly had a lot of issues. It didn't apply well, didn't dry down great, color transfer. I mean, the fact that it didn't really smell is amazing, but all of those things, plus the fact that the color was kind of funky on me and it didn't fade great, means that this is a no for me. Next up is the newest self-tan launch. This is from Bondi Sands and it's called the Techno Color Emerald One Hour Express Self-Tanning Foam. Only $27, which is great, and comes in four different shades. So they are kind of like funky names, but then they, I was gonna say signify, that's not the right word. Signal, clarify, indicate. I think I was trying to say literally all those words in my head at the same time. So the color sapphire is for fair skin tones. Emerald is for medium skin tones. Magenta is for olive to deep skin tones. And caramel is for deep skin tones. Even though I have fair skin, I didn't want this to be too light on my skin. So I went ahead and picked up Emerald. Ease of application is a four and a half out of five. Not like the most perfect application of all time, but no major issues. Post application dry down gets a four out out of five, I felt like it did stay a little bit wet and sticky initially. It wasn't terrible and it mostly dried, but I feel like that stick kind of stayed in like my arm creases and knee creases. The product itself didn't really have any fragrance. It just kind of smelled like what you'd expect a self tanner to smell like. And it definitely started to smell really quickly within the first one to two hours of wearing it. I was like, oh, yep, I'm gonna be smelling this. And the smell got pretty intense while it was developing. This is supposed to be a one hour express Self tanner, but I've told you guys before that I just do not buy that there is any one hour express self tanner out there that actually gives you deep dark color that lasts. So I left this on for five hours and I felt like at that point it was fully developed. Even though this smelled really funky when it was developing, the smell after I showered was not that bad. It had a little bit of a smell, but I felt like it just, it was minimal. And this color ended up coming out a lot lighter than I was anticipating. It's something that definitely looks natural, lighter compared to the red and I would say that this one has a subtle, subtle olive undertone, not nearly to the level of Molly May, but just enough to make it look a little bit more natural. The fade was even, so that gets a five out of five, but in terms of the color longevity, I had major color fade by day four, and it was pretty much fully gone by day five. So this one was a bummer for me. I really thought that it was gonna work better than it did. I mean, if you are into a lighter, more natural looking tan, I think that you will love it, because it really is pretty in that sense 
sense, but if you're like me and you want your self tan to look deep and dark, don't go for this one. Second to last, we have B Tan Tanned AF. This one is only $9.99, which is incredible. And this brand has so many different shades. I am truly so confused by what each shade actually is supposed to mean and who it's for and what the differences are between them. I feel like it's just really messy to figure out as a consumer. So this is one that you guys had requested. So I picked it up. Four and a half out of five for ease of application and four out of five for post application dry down. It did take a while to fully dry, but once it got there, it was dry. Color transfer, I would give a four out of five. The smell of the formula kind of smelled like dirt and the same smell translated while it was developing. It wasn't anything too bad, but I just would get these whiffs of like dirt. This one is also supposed to be a one hour express tan, but didn't trust it. So I left it on for about five to six hours. And this one was interesting because it did have a little bit of a smell for 24 hours, but I felt like it wasn't the same kind of nasty like BO smell as normal. It just kind of continued to smell dirty, but it was super, super subtle. I will say that. So I wasn't like, oh my God, I just, I reek of dirt. Like I could just get these tiny hints of that smell here and there, but subtle. This one is a little bit darker than Bondi Sands, but also not super dark. It's something that I would consider to be a more natural look. I wonder if I left this on for a full eight hours, if it would get darker, because I feel like a lot of people really love this one. I cannot imagine how this would work in just an hour. I'm calling BS, but it has a pretty warm undertone. That's not too orange. It's just like not dark enough for what I'm going for. So this gets a three and a half out of five for me. It faded evenly. So I'll give that a five out of five, but it didn't last a super long time. It was pretty much completely completely gone by day five. So not bad. Again, if you want something that looks more natural, then this could be one to consider, but not a personal favorite of mine. And last but not least is the Pita Jane Self Tanning Mousse. The only reason I picked this up is because it came up in my Google search when I was searching for a different self tanner. And I was like, what is that? The packaging is so cute. I feel like it really drew me in and I hadn't heard of this brand before. So I wanted to test it out. It retails for $42 and there are three shades, which are light, medium, and dark. This has a very different formula than the rest of these self tanners. It's this really light, soft, smooth mousse. It's super easy to blend. It really does glide on the skin, but you have to be careful because if you squeeze down too hard on the nozzle, a lot of the mousse can come out and then that makes it more difficult to blend because you just have a lot to work with. So if you're careful, you just use a little, it's so, so nice to work with and it gets a five out of five for sure. And it's also just not as wet as some other self tanners. So I really love that about it, how lightweight it feels. And I think because of that, it fully dries down five out of five. It's one of those where I'm like, yes, I don't feel like I'm sitting in wet self tan stick. I didn't have transfer issues with this one. I was a little bit worried that I would because the mousse itself is super dark, but I didn't. So four and a half out of five. And the smell of this one is the best in my opinion. It kind of smells like this yummy floral perfume. I really liked it. This one kind of smells like dirt while it's developing too, but after leaving this on for eight hours and showering, I actually have it on right now. I can't really smell it much. It's like if I stick my nose up to it, I can smell it a little bit. There's not nothing there, but just in sitting here, I'm not smelling myself, which is huge. As you can probably tell by my arms right now and the afters I'm going to show you, the color is really, really nice and dark. It definitely does lean warm. So if you don't want a self tan that looks super warm and undertone on you, then I wouldn't go for this one. But for me, my skin naturally tans really warm toned. So I feel like this looks great. Oh, what would I rate this for color? Like a four and a half to five? out of five. Am I going to go there? I might even fade here. And this one does last a full seven days on me. So this one is officially the winner of this self tan showdown. I obviously enjoy it enough to be wearing it again after testing it out for you guys. All right. Those are all of the self tanners that I wanted to include in my fourth self tan showdown. Oh my goodness. The amount of self tanners that I have tested over the past few years is kind of insane. Are you going to wrap up the video with me? There still are so many other self tanners out there that you guys have asked me to review, but I feel like we should pause on this series for a bit because 
I have reviewed so many at this point, like in each individual video I review a ton. So the fact that I've, hello, I love you so much. The fact that I've done that four times, I feel like is just a lot. So I feel like we need to wait for some new viral product launches in this category, maybe some innovations. That would be amazing. Hopefully that's okay with you guys, but I wanted to give you one last one because as you just saw, I had so many others that I had tested already, but hadn't reviewed for you guys yet. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you going to pick any of these up after watching this? Are you going to stick with a different self tanner? Let us know what you're using. As always, I'll have everything listed and linked in my description box below if you do want to purchase anything. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Hi, sweetie, I love ya. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. I love you so much.